This is what I'm going to talk through this morning. So I'm briefly just going to line up the motivation for Cyclone with the motivation that Matthias talked about earlier with DSLs. And then obviously I'm going to dive into Cyclone, what it is, what it does, the two different modes of operation it supports. And then I'll move on from there to talking about the different levels of abstraction that we have to deal with when we're, we're using Cyclone or when we're writing Cyclone. And then I'm going to talk about the two main domains that Cyclone is developed for. And those are the Elfric domain, which is the one used by the UK Met Office. And the other one is the Nemo domain, which is being developed primarily targeting, targeting the Nemo family of ocean modeling codes. But obviously I will talk about that a bit more when I get there. And then at the end, I'll give you a brief summary of all the other features that I could talk about, but I don't have time to talk about. So we're going to crack on. Um, yes, so Cyclone is all about this trying to have your cake and eat it. So trying to have all three of your P's, having performance, having portability and having productivity. So the aim is that we want maintainable high performance software. We want our weather and climate models to be maintainable over the potentially decades that they're there operational life will consist of. Um, we want them to be single source science code. We don't want different versions of the code for different platforms. And we want them to perform well on whatever supercomputer we have access to. And all of that means, of course, as Matar showed with his example, that you have complex parallel code. You have a whole zoo of complex parallel architectures, as Simon described in his introductory talk. And you have the fact that compilers themselves, these things that you rely upon to take your procedural code and turn it into something that will run on a computer, they themselves are very complex. And all of that means you have a very, very complex optimization space to which there is just no single solution, really. So you can't have single source optimized code for a whole that will work well on a whole range of platforms. So one way of proceeding from this problem is to separate out your science specification from all the aspects related to code performance and code optimization. And Cyclone is a tool that helps you to do this. So it is a domain specific compiler for domain specific languages that are embedded in another language. So in our case, uh, the DSLs we work with are embedded in Fortran, although they don't have to be, but at the minute that's what we support. Um, Cyclone is configurable. It will do finite difference, finite volume type codes like Nemo, and it will also do finite element codes like Elfric, the Met Office model. Currently, we are we support going from Fortran back out to Fortran or OpenCL. So we can go from Fortran to OpenCL for our GeoCean uh, DSL, and that is functionality that is sort of prototype and therefore we hope to be able to build on that and expand out to our more production domain specific domains of Nemo and Elfric in time. As was discussed in the chat a bit earlier, Cyclone supports both distributed, so MPI and shared memory parallelism. And it supports both code generation, so generating code from scratch given some specification of the science you want to do, and transforming existing code. And Cyclone is very much aimed at the HPC expert. It's not designed to be a black box that will magically produce you the right answer. It is designed to be a tool. And there are some reasons for this. First off, people like using tools. And also it's very hard to beat a human. Humans have incredible intuition and intelligence and therefore trying to build that into a tool is hard, whereas it's much better to leverage that expertise. This flexibility also means that people are able to work around limitations or bugs as you progress in your careers, or maybe you've already experienced the, I have access to all of these computers, but on this computer, they only have this version of the compiler and that version of the compiler has a bug in it. And that can be a real problem. But if you have a tool that enables you to work around that, then that can be very powerful. The optimizations that Cyclone applies are encoded as a recipe. So the HPC expert comes up with a recipe and that recipe is applied to the source code rather than the recipe being baked into the source code and therefore hard to change in the future. And of course, as soon as you've broken out this idea of having a recipe, then you can have a different recipe for each computer architecture you're interested in. And ultimately, Cyclone enables scriptable whole code optimization. So you have one or maybe just a handful of scripts and they apply the transformations that you as the HPC expert or someone else as the HPC expert think will work well for a particular architecture. 
the basic structure of Cyclone looks very much like the basic structure of Dusk and Dawn, really. It's the same kind of idea. You start off with code on the left-hand side. Uh, in our case, we always start off with Fortran code. Um, you raise that up in some way into an internal representation, which in our case we call the CIIR, the Cyclone Internal Representation. Once you're in that representation, you can apply transformations. So to optimize the code that's going to be generated or maybe to add other functionality, as I'll talk about it towards the end of this talk. And then once you've got the, that internal intermediate internal representation in the form that you want, then you give it to one of your backends. And in this talk, I'm really only going to talk about the Fortran backend. So you give it to the Fortran backend and that generates you Fortran at the end uh, with the difference that it will now have directives in it if you're doing OpenAC or OpenMP, or it will have maybe Halo Exchange calls and things in it if you're doing MPI as well. So, and common to all of our front ends, because we're starting with Fortran, is this thing called fParser, which is a Fortran parser written in Python. And because it's common to all that we do, um, we, I'm going to talk a little bit about that next. So, um, in a way, Fortran is one of Cyclone's unique selling points, really. Um, Fortran, although it's quite, much, quite a, it's very widely used in the weather and climate domain, I think it's fair to say that a lot of tool chains do not support it. Um, so you'll hear talk of SQL and One API and things like CUDA. And of course, all of that is largely C and C++ based. So Cyclone, on the other hand, supports Fortran. And the way we do that is that we have this Fortran parser, which is available on GitHub called fParser, and it will parse Fortran 2003 and below and some 2008 features. It will take Fortran code. So for instance, you might have this very simple stencil operation here. It will parse it and it will give you back a parse tree of that code. So you can see it's a tree-like structure. And if you look, you can see that there's a, it knows there's a do statement and then that do statement has loop control and then down in here somewhere, oh, I don't get as far as the assignments, down below there, there will be assignments. Um, this parser is fairly, fairly mature now. It can parse the whole of the MetaOffice's unified model. It can parse the whole of their new Elfrit model and it can parse all of the Nemo source. And work is in progress to support parsing other models such as IFS from ECMWF. And fParser is used primarily by Cyclone, I think it's fair to say, but it is used in some other tools. So the MetOffice have a code checking tool called Stylist that uses it. And ECMWF have a tool called Loki, which also uses it. So that is how we support Fortran. Now, as I mentioned earlier, Cyclone has two primary modes of operation, which we call revolution and evolution. So obviously, if you're going to sit down and write a code in a DSL, you will generally need to start from scratch. You'll need to throw away your existing code or at least keep it to one side and write it again using this domain specific language that you have chosen. And in Cyclone, we have two domains that we support that take that approach. So the first and the primary one is Elfric, which is a domain specific language used by the UK Met Office in their next generation atmosphere model. And it supports a mixed finite element scheme on a mesh that is unstructured in the horizontal and structured in the vertical. And that domain specific language is embedded in Fortran. So, um, well, I'll talk a bit more about it in a minute, but basically the scientists are still writing Fortran and the code that we generate is also in Fortran. And then we also have the GeoCean domain, which is similar to Elfric, but much simpler. So it is purely for two dimensional, finite difference models on a stretched structured grid also embedded in Fortran. And we often use the GeoCean domain as a sort of a prototyping domain because it's much simpler than the finite elements domain of Elfric. So we can, that's where we do experiments with different backends and things, for instance, in there. As well as revolution, we also support this idea of evolution because the idea that you have to start from scratch, you have to choose a domain specific language and then rewrite your model in it is pretty daunting and often not acceptable to, to, to communities who have an existing model. And therefore, we have developed this idea that Cyclone can process existing code as long as that existing code follows strict coding conventions. Because if it does follow strict coding conventions, then Cyclone is able to 
recognize the code structures and we can construct a higher level internal representation of that code, uh, the CIR in our case, obviously. And then as usual, once you have that CIR, you can apply transformations to it and then write out the, the transform code in Fortran again at the end or potentially in other languages. Uh, this, this evolutionary approach is in development for NEMO, the NEMO Ocean model, uh, plus associated models. So for instance, the SI3 ICE model and the Medusa biogeochemical model. And it has also been made configurable, thanks mainly to Jörg at BOM in Australia, and therefore is applicable to other models as well, as long as it's configured correctly and has been applied to the ROMS Ocean model. So in Cyclone, we, well, in fact, probably in any domain specific language, you're thinking about levels of abstraction. So it's worth a slide now to talk about what we mean when we talk about levels of abstraction. So at the top, at the highest level of abstraction, you have things that are domain specific. So you have an Elfric internal representation, for instance, a Nemo internal representation, a Geocean internal representation, and they have concepts that are unique to, to that domain. So for instance, the Nemo internal representation has the concept of a loop over vertical levels and a loop over latitude and a loop over longitude. Whereas the Elfric domain knows about finite elements. So it knows about the different function spaces. It knows about their connectivities. It knows about whether they're discontinuous or not. But all of that stuff is very much domain specific. Below that, we have our SciIR. Now, SciIR is language independent. So it is a language independent way of representing any procedural type language like Fortran or C, uh, but with any language specific features abstracted away. So for instance, the Fortran where statement becomes a loop with an if inside it, that kind of thing. Below the language independence IIR level, we have the language specific level. So at this point, you're, you're in Fortran or you're in C and you have your specific directives in there and your MPI calls. And this is, this is the lowest level. So Cyclone is all about moving between these levels and the entry point into these levels uh, depends upon whether you're doing evolution or revolution. So the Elfric domain first which is, as I've said, this idea of revolution. So you're writing or the scientist is writing code in a DSL and then having Cyclone generate code for them. So that uses the this idea of separation of concern. So this is back to the three P's idea where you want you don't want the scientist to be worrying about computational performance. So we split the the code into these three conceptual layers, which we call SciCal. The top layer is the algorithm where the scientist is writing um, their code in terms of fields. So they have this field and they have this other field and maybe they want to add these fields together or take the difference of them or perform a stencil operation on them. At the bottom level, you have a kernel where the scientist is responsible for writing the code that for a single column of their model, for instance, performs the necessary updates on a given field. So they're responsible for writing that and for writing the algorithm and then given the algorithm and given the kernel, then Cyclone is responsible for generating this parallel system code in the middle that knows that this model consists of many, many, many columns of data and that they are distributed over your nodes in a machine in some way, and that you are going to exploit that by using MPI or OpenMP or OpenAC. So in, in terms of levels of abstraction in Elfric, it looks a bit like this. So um, we start at the domain specific language level because this is a revolution. So the scientists are writing their code and their kernel code and their metadata in the domain specific language, which then gets translated into the Elfric internal representation, at which point transformations are applied. And after that, it's been translated. Tra yeah after it has been transformed, it is lowered. It is lowered first to the language independent CIR. And then from there, once you're in CIR, then potentially you can go to other languages. Currently, we only support going to Fortran, but in theory, you could generate C or C++ at that point as well. To 
help you to see what this looks like in practice. I'm just going to talk, walk through a small example now, giving you some actual code fragments. So in the Alfred DSL, the algorithm layer looks a bit like this. It's in Fortran. You have some derived types that are, that are field types. These are logically global. That means that this layer, you don't see the fact that they are actually shared over the nodes of your computer in some way. You don't care about that as a scientist. You know, you have this field and you want to do some things with it. In order to specify what computation you want to apply to those fields, we have what we call this invoke. And an invoke basically says that I have this list of kernels and I want you to execute them for the, the fields I'm going to supply as arguments. And it's up to the system as to how to do that. So how to distribute that work over the machine nodes in the machine and how to get single node performance out of them as well. So in this example, for instance, you can see that um, we're going to call this set val c kernel and we're going to give it this field grad p and we're going to set it to zero. And that's what set val c does. And then we've got some other more complicated kernels that are going to do various mathematical operations. And that's all the scientist needs to write at this level. They don't need to know whether what kind of machine they're running on or how this is going to be optimized. The metadata, um, so a kernel in, in the Elfric DSL, um, obviously you have information at the algorithm layer that I've just shown you as to what kernels you're going to call, uh, but then the kernels themselves, in order for Cyclone to reason about what's required, the kernels must be described with metadata. So uh, I'm giving you an example here of fairly complex metadata actually for this apply variable HX kernel type. And you can see it takes 10 arguments. Um, and for each of those arguments, we have some metadata describing what it is. So th the first four of them are fields, then we have four operators, and then we have two scalar arguments as well. And then for each of these fields or operators, we have to say whether they have write access or whether they're only read. And then we have to say what function space they're on. Um, so and there are various names that mean things in the in, um, in finite element world. But special to this is the fact that so we're saying here, for instance, that this third argument can be on any function space. And as soon as you say it can be on any function space, then that limits the, the optimizations that the system can do because it knows less about that. Whereas, for instance, if it knows it's on W3, then there are certain rules that it can apply in order to, to take some shortcuts. So that's what the kernel metadata looks like. So taken with that metadata and with the algorithm there I showed you earlier, Cyclone is then able to generate what we might call vanilla Scilayer code. So this is functionally correct Fortran code that will do everything that the scientist has asked of it and produce the right answer. So you can see it has generated a loop up here that is doing our initialization of this field and setting it to zero. And then we have some much more complicated stuff where we're looping over all the cells in a particular function space and calling each of these user supplied kernels. And you can see that the argument list of these kernels is in fact much more complicated than the, the scientists needed to specify in the algorithm layer. There are things like the number of vertical layers in the mesh. There's things like the number of degrees of freedom and the number of unique degrees of freedom. And then because Elfric uses a horizontally unstructured mesh, you have to provide a DOF map as well. So that says that for this particular cell, this is where all the DOFs are basically. So you have, so Cyclone from the metadata has generated this complex argument list and supplied it to the, the kernel. And the scientist doesn't have to worry about getting any of that right. So that's all well and good. So we have some code that will execute and give you the right answer, but so far it will well, depending on what settings you run Cyclone with, it will only execute in serial. But what happens if we want to transform it? So uh, I'm going to quickly talk through an example now. If you're interested, then this is in example three of Elfric in the Cyclone repository, which I'll point you to in a bit. So if we take a simpler example now, so say we have an, in, an algorithm code that has an invoke that only calls one kernel. So it calls our W3 solver kernel and it passes it these arguments. So that's much simpler. Uh, is that what I wanted? Yes. So um, Cyclone will take that and the kernel metadata and will generate the CIR for, for that invoke. So it knows that this invoke is called that. And since it only has one kernel in it, it uses the name of the kernel to name it. It has a loop that is over all cells in W3. 
and it's going to call this solver w3 kernel code and pass it these various fields so that's cyclone's view of it once you have it in that internal representation you can transform it so this is I think this is or was until recently the optimization script that is actually applied to the whole of the Elfric code. But for our purposes here, you only need to look at the bit I've circled in orange, which is just an example of applying OpenMP. So because uh, because Cyclone is written in Python and the CIIR is a Python IR, um, it's and designed to be mm, processed and modified within Python itself, then the process of writing a script to optimize a particular CIR is very simple if you know Python. So for instance, in this case, we have our schedule, which is um, the description of what's going to happen in the invoke. We loop over all of the children of that schedule. We find anything that is a loop. And if it's a loop um, that we can apply OpenMP to, then we apply OpenMP to it and we're done essentially there are other you can see it's a bit more complicated than that because there's issues of coloring but for our intents and purposes here you simply loop through your schedule find all the loops and apply the transformation that you want to apply to it and after you've done that you have a transform CIR. so now you can see that uh, our CIR is pretty much the way it was before except that we've now gained this open mp parallel do directive so that is applied to this loop, which means that this loop will be run thread parallel now. And once you generate Fortran from that CIR, then you get what you might expect. So if you know OpenMP, then you see you've got your fairly standard OpenMP parallel do directive around this loop over cells. And this kernel is going to be invoked in parallel by the various threads. And finally, for completeness, the algorithm code itself has to be transformed because there's no such thing as invoke in parallel. So you have to replace that call invoke with a call to the actual generated Scilayer routine. So that Scilayer routine is called this, called invoke zero, blah, blah, blah. And we pass it in the, the various fields that are needed. And that's the only change that happens to the algorithm layer code. So that was Elfric. In the Nemo domain, things are slightly different because we're dealing with evolution rather than revolution. So because we're starting with existing code, we start, instead of starting at the top in a domain-specific language, we start at the bottom. So we're starting with existing Fortran code, which comes in through the Fortran parser, F parser. And then we have a front end to our CIR that takes an F parser parse tree and raises it up into a language independent CIR. Once you've done that, we then have a transformation that takes that language independent CIR and raises it up to a Nemo internal representation. So this step means going through and recognizing that a loop over JI is a loop over longitude, for instance, or a loop over JK is a loop over vertical points. And in that way, you introduce domain specific knowledge into your internal representation. Once you've done that, you can apply transformations up here as you would do for Elfric. And then it comes back down to a language independent representation again, and then finally back out to parallel Fortran code. Although we do have um, an experimental backend that can generate SIR code. So it can generate the intermediate representation used by Dusk and Dawn, for instance. So I shall walk through an example of the, the Nemo IR now. So for instance, in Nemo, Nemo itself, you will see code that looks like this. It's pretty standard Fortran stencil operations. Um, they make heavy use. In fact, they mandate the use of array notation. So this is saying apply set ZDIT, all of those um, array elements to zero and does that a lot, and then you've got these stencil operations down here. So that's what your Fortran might look like. If you give that to Cyclone, then it will construct the parse tree for it, and then it will construct the CIR, and then finally it will construct a Nemo level CIR for it. So you can see that in this fragment I'm showing you here, it has recognized that we have a loop over vertical levels, and that's outside a loop over latitude, and that's outside a loop over longitude, and then inside it we have this concept of an inlined kernel so essentially we're treating the body of the loop as though it's a kernel but it's been inlined inside the loop 
and this particular kernel, the first line of it is an assignment to the array zdit at jijk, jjjk. So once you've got that transformation, you can transform it. So uh, very similar to Elfric, you, you write a Python script, and again, you get hold of your schedule that describes all the computation that's going on, and you loop over it. And in this case, we we are looking for kernel. So we, we go through all of our loops and we look to see if it contains a kernel. And if the loop does contain a kernel, then, and the loop is over vertical levels, then in this example, I'm applying an OpenMP parallel loop trans. So that's basically saying that if we have a loop over vertical levels and it contains pure computation, that is, it's a kernel, then we're going to parallelize it with our OpenMP parallel loop trans. And once you've done that, then again, you, you see what you would expect to see. So that the, the CIR has been transformed and you now have this directive with the loop over vertical levels as its first child. So we're just parallelizing the loop over vertical levels with OpenMP. And then of course, when you generate Fortran out the back, you get your, your standard OpenMP pragmas added to the code. So you started with code that was thread serial and you've ended up with code that now uses OpenMP to parallelize this loop. So that was a whistle-stop tour of Cyclone and its two main APIs, the Elfric API and the Nemo API. There are many, many other features that we don't have time to talk about today. So there are a whole slew of different transformations available. So you can perform loop fusion. There are all sorts of different OpenMP transformations you can do, including uh, work being done by Aiden now to add support for OpenMP tasking. We support OpenAC, so one of the, the key drivers for the NEMO work is being able to transform NEMO so that it works on GPU, and we do that via OpenAC at the moment. We can also generate OpenCL for the GeoGen API, which and permits code to be generated to run on both GPU and FPGA. I've also not talked much about Halo exchanges. Uh, in Elfric, we are, as Rupert said in the chat earlier, we are responsible for generating all the Halo exchange calls in Elfric and making sure that we, that, you know, only the minimum required number are done. Um, in Nemo, we don't do that. In Nemo, because Nemo is an existing MPI code, we don't touch the halo exchanges in Nemo, although in future work we might, we could imagine looking to see that they are valid, that they are necessary, um, that kind of thing. There are other functionality, there is other functionality that Cyclone has. So we have this concept of the Data API, which essentially is based around this idea that you can insert calipers into your CIR, so into your internal representation. And as soon as you have the idea of adding calipers, then there are very many things you can do. So the most obvious one is probably profiling. So how much time do I spend inside this region, for instance? And it's using the profiling functionality that has generated this pretty picture at the bottom. So this is a profile of um, Nemo running on a GPU using the NVIDIA profiler, and it's doing 10 time steps, which is why you've got these 10 features in the plot. Um, and that's that profiling information is inserted using Cyclone as it processes the code. So not only does it open add, add open act to run it on GPU, it's also adding profiling information into the code as well. There are other things you can do. You can extract a kernel, including the necessary data in order to run it so that you can then maybe benchmark it and try and optimize it in isolation from the model as a whole. There's various debugging and validation things you can do. So we have um, a transformation, for instance, that will check that all fields going into a kernel and coming out of a kernel don't contain any not of numbers or any overflows or underflows. And then finally, we can also, as you'd expect, given that we need to be able to do this kind of stuff for our MPI Hello exchanges, we can generate the DAG view of a schedule, for instance, which might help you identify uh, the kind of optimizations you want to apply to it. And that's it. I am out of time. So um, just to emphasize again, Cyclone is a tool for use by an HPC expert. It allows the HPC expert to apply the transformations they think will work well to a given model and to do it to the whole of the model using Python scripts, essentially. And just to say, if you want to find out more, then obviously Rupert and I are available today and we'll be happy to take any questions over email. Those are our emails. And there are various documents available. So on Read the Docs, we have Cyclone user guide, and then there's also the dash dev for developer guide and dash ref for the reference guide. Thank you very much.
and I'll take any questions now if we have time to do that. There are a couple of questions in the chat, Andy, if you can see. Uh, yeah, I've just realised I've not scrolled all the way to the bottom. Thank you. Right. Da, 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 da. Right. So, Jeanne, apologies for the pronunciation, says, given a complex model in Fortran, Cyclone can generate the places to be optimised and then generate new parallel code for the interested parts. Do we have to integrate the new parallel codes manually into the original model? or can Cyclone do it automatically? Yes, that's a good question. So generally, Cyclone will form part of your build system. So if you want to process some of your code, then you will need to introduce a step where you, where you apply Cyclone to the files that you're interested in, and then put those files somewhere that your build system will pick them up. So for instance, it's possible to extend the Nemo build system so that as part because it does a pre-processing step anyway as part of that pre-processing it can also run cyclone generate the code and then that's picked up by the build system so i suppose i'm saying yes you do have to do it yourself because cyclone doesn't know anything about your build system um and then sophie's also asked a question let me just see if i can so sophie asks can you share some elements between the different irs alfred nemo and then Sophie asks, if you would have to use Cyclone for another ocean model, how much of the work done for Nemo will you be allowed to reuse? Right. Um, yes. So the idea is that hopefully most of it you would be allowed to reuse. So Cyclone is configurable. You can configure it to recognize um, different loop types, for instance, different variable names. And ideally, the concepts from one ocean model to another ocean model should be similar and how you parallelize them would therefore be similar. So hopefully there would be a lot of reuse in there. But we haven't, it's fair to say, I think we haven't done a lot of investigation of that. As I said, Jörg has done some work with the ROMS ocean model and got Cyclone working for that, but we haven't looked at anything recently. 